account on YouTube. I am so very excited. Um, I think tonight's going to be a good one. Tonight, what we are talking about is this beautiful concept called my business list. If you guys are excited, go ahead and drop a butterfly real, real, real fast so we can get started. This live today is because of one of our viewers, hey, Taria, one of our beautiful viewers who met, had made, he made a comment in a previous one of our lives. And I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but I specifically remember reading and seeing him say, I think I was talking about minding your business. And he said, mind the business that pays you. And I said, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's more to that. And I told him that I was going to come back to him and I never made it back around to him. So I'm going to wait because I know he's here somewhere and we're going to talk to him just just a little bit if that's OK. Also, for everybody who knows, we're going to change up the game just a little bit. I know recently we have had people coming in just over time. Right. Um, different people on different lives to come and moderate for us. But, you know, I am feeling away because today is the last or this week, rather, is the last week of school. Um, but last week of my classes at Spelman, and I think I am having some pre FOMO. Okay, so the way we're gonna fix that is we're going to transform this space into my classroom just a little bit. Okay, if you're okay with that, go ahead and let me know. And what that looks like is instead of having a singular moderator outside of um, DJ Rico Belly, what we're gonna do is have people come on, or I'm gonna have people come and join me. Let's have some conversation. If you have questions, if you want to know what's going on, if you're like, wait a minute, can you explain that just a little bit more? Can you explain that just a little bit differently? I want to create the space for this to be my classroom for this summer. If you're OK with it, let me know. I'm excited. And in the meantime, Martover, are you OK with joining me real quick? If you are, go ahead and request to join my live. I'm so excited to see all of these people. Y'all already know we, we are about to go all the way up tonight. OK, so we are talking about my business list and I cannot wait to get started. We are just waiting for somebody to join my live real quick. The person who inspired our live today, not even recognizing that he did. I'm just waiting for you to come on whenever you can. In the meantime, let me know how your Monday is going. Let me know how you are feeling today. Let me know what you're thinking today. Let me know how you're grooving today. Um, I want to meet everybody exactly where we all are. Okay. So it should pop up, um, October. If you pull all the way to the top, I'm going to see if I can find you to add you in. Ah, I see you. Okay. All right. Everybody give my friend Martover some love. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, Amy. I'm doing wonderfully. So do you remember the night that I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you said, tell me what you said. Um, I said something to the effects of mind the business that pays you. Mind the business that pays you. And when you think about that, tell me what it brings up for you. What does that feel like? What are you thinking about? Um, when I say mind the business that pays me, essentially what I'm saying is stand in your own lane, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. I know oftentimes we get in positions where we want to overextend ourselves and extend ourselves and essentially almost end up depleting ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do so much and help other people and take care of this and take care of that, especially when it comes to the terms of just like taking care of your family or being on your P's and Q's for mm -hmm. other people. And we lose sight of the fact that we have missions for mm -hmm. ourselves to complete or missions for our higher being. And sometimes I feel like it's essential to bring all that back to the space that you're in and focus on you because if you're the best you you can be, then it essentially helps everyone else around you. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the first thing that came to my mind when I read Mind the Business That Pays You. It, the first thing that came into my mind was, whoa, 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 no, 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 it's money. What we think about is, oh, I got to go get in my bag, right? That's the thing that we think about is the way that I can show that I am successful, the way that I can show that I'm doing things that must be worth something is because it's directly linked to the monetary value mm -hmm. that's given to me in result. Make sense? I definitely get that. Okay. 
I will say to that though, um, I feel like it's not necessarily wrong. It's just exactly how you go about doing it because if you do it from a monetary value, even with it being solely focused on money or like gains for a reason for yourself, I can still how that can essentially help others around you after you get that gain. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like it's really, it really, it doesn't really depend on what you're doing per se, but it's what you do with whatever you've attained once you've attained mm-hmm. that level or that monetary value or that prestige is what you do after that that really has the big effect on not just yourself but the other people around you i love it i love it martelford thank you so much for joining my classroom i'm gonna i'm gonna sound on that a little bit is that okay with you so i'm gonna let you go so that you can get comfortable at home and then we're gonna get into it a little bit more okay thank you i really really appreciate you no problem all right okay so let's talk about value Okay, and let's talk about minding the business that provides value to you. So you guys know I'm a professor at Spelman. Okay, and before then, before being here, I've taught in a few different spaces. Okay, not Spelman is my first um, higher education space, but I want everybody to remember when they sat in the classroom. I want everybody to remember what it was like to be a kid in the classroom. And I want to take you back to algebra class, okay? If you are sitting in algebra class and you are doing the very best that you can do, okay? And in this algebra class, it is your goal, it is your job to go to school and to learn, okay? So the teacher's at the front of the classroom and she says, you know what, guys, today we are going to have a test. And so the teacher passes out the papers and everybody takes the test and you get done with your test and you just look like, ooh, mm-mm, I didn't understand any of that. They were talking about A's and B's and C's and I studied ones and twos and threes. Something ain't right here. And you look to your left and the person to the left of you looks like, oh yeah, I just did that. Right? The person to your right is like, eh, eh. you can't really get a read on them. And so the day comes when you get your test back. And you get your test back and you look at the test. Hey, everybody, you get your test back and you have made a 34%. Okay. So if you make a 34% on your test, you tell me, somebody tell me what's going on. You're failing, right? You don't have it. And it's not necessarily that you're in a bad space. It's that you have not grasped the concept in any way, shape, fashion, or form. And so in this space, it is important for you to figure out how you're going to get some help. So if you had to choose, and I would like some feedback from you all, if you had to choose between asking the person on your left, for my example that I just gave, and asking the person on your right for assistance in moving forward so that you can succeed and excel in this class, who are you asking? Are you going to ask the person on your left or are you going to ask the person on your right? Y'all know I'm used to hearing people talk back to me in the classroom, so I would love for you to let me know what you think. Who are you asking? Who would you feel most comfortable going to? If you need help, you're going to go to the person on your left, the person. So here's the thing. I never said that anybody said they had anything. I said people appear to have it. Okay. Now an appearance and a fact are two different things. There's a lot of us who walking around here looking like we got everything together and are as broken as broken can be. But so using your very best brain, what you do is you go ask that person to the left of you. Okay, so the person on the right, somebody said they were asking the person on the right. So what we don't know is that the person on our left has made a 65. The person on our right has made a 75. Okay. Now the person on our left who appeared to have done very well who appear to have had it all together because here we are calling ourselves reading other people's perspective of their situation because we're not minding our business, see? So we look over here and we go, you know what? Let me ask this person who we don't know has made a 65. Now, their response to their test was really the fact that they did way better than they thought they were going to do. It was no indication of how they did on a scale of zero to 100. Okay. 
So you go and you ask and you say, hey, friend, listen, I am not doing good in this class at all. I saw you when you got your test paper bag. You looked excited. Like when you, um, you know, when you were taking a test, you looked like you had it all the way together. And so you go, friend, can you help me, please? Please, friend, please help me. And friend, right, because this is what we do. It's like, you know what? It is our job. It is our duty to just give everybody everything that it is that we have. So let me go help my friend. Absolutely, friend. Can you meet me after school tomorrow? And we can sit down together and I'm going to teach you everything that I know. And that friend sits down with you. And y'all open up your algebra books and you start on page one. And by the time you finish studying, you make it all the way to the end of whatever that test was on. And this person who, out of the kindness of their heart, is making extra time for you. Does everything they can to give you all the knowledge that they have in their brain. They do everything that they can impart into you all of the wisdom that has been given to them. Now, do we understand that? In the place of us giving somebody else everything we have and we are failing, the best that we can do is fail them. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, let me know. Because if I need to run it back, I can. Let me know. Let me know, let me know, let me know. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. Who are you generally in this situation? Are you the person who's asking from help for help from people who appear to have it together? Are you the person that is literally on empty, literally on zero, literally don't have nothing to give to nobody? Are you the one trying to give your last that you didn't have anyway away to somebody else? Or are you the person on the other side, perfectly content with their 75? Now, is it an A? No. Let's see that person on the right. Had you come to them and you said, hey, friend. Can you help me? Hey, friend, I, I, I need your help because, see, I went to this one person. And he gave me everything that he knew. She gave me everything that he knew. I mean, that she knew. And I still didn't do too well. So let me go to my next option. And that's the friend on the other side. And so the friend on the other side goes, you know what? I would love to help you, but I recognize that I'm not in the position to. So the best way that I can help us is if me and you go together to office hours and we can go talk to the teacher because I can guarantee you the teacher know more than all of us. The teacher in this situation is life. The teacher in this situation is life. Life is constantly teaching us. But the issue is we so busy in our friend's paper. We are so busy looking next to us. We are so busy minding everybody's business but our own that we miss the lessons that life is here to teach us. I'm going to let it marinate. So if you are a friend on the left, oh, yes, please go get your notebook. If you don't have it already, go get it. For those of you who are new, who don't understand what it is that we do, what we do is this every single Monday night. We have a real good time. We have a real good party. And then, and then I teach you about life design. And then I teach you what I teach in my class. Then I share with you what I share with my clients. This is our free version of my master classes every Monday night at eight. Okay. So I'm just waiting for everybody to go get your notebook. And while you get your notebook, go ask three people to come and join us. Okay. So here we are in class. Now, if you are the person in the middle, the beautiful thing about it is you recognize that you're failing. That's number one. You have acknowledged that you are failing. You have assessed your situation. The situation is that I'm not doing well and I need to be doing better than I'm doing if I plan on succeeding in this thing, whatever this test is that I'm being given. And then you're addressing it. Now, could you address it in a better fashion? Probably. But you were dressing it and talking to somebody. And you tried your left and the person on the left was like, mm, I'll give you everything that I have. And they ended up failing you. And then the person on your right is like, I'm not the person to ask. So then what do you do? You go to that thing called life. And what we are missing is that that's, those are the circumstances that life is begging for us to see right now. 
We are in a space. We are in a situation. We are in position right now where life has said there is a whole lot going on out here. And it's a whole lot of people missing all the lessons. And so what we're going to do is go sit down. This is what we talked about in, I want to say, episode one. We talked about how life has literally put everybody in time out to say, you get a beautiful opportunity today. You want to learn your lesson? Come to tutoring with the best teacher there is. And that teacher is life. And life has set us all down and said, let's spend some time together. Let's spend some time together. If you have any questions as we go, please drop them. Please drop them. You actually can drop them in the comment box this week. We're working it through. You can drop it just, you know, a comment however you see fit. Okay. So life has set us all down. And it's like, so here's the thing. Your teacher has said, let me pull you to the side. Let me pull you to the side. We need to have some individual office hours. And in our individual office hours, we are going to talk about all these lessons that I can see that you've kept missing again and again and again. And so you're going to spend some time with me and you can see it as detention if you feel like it. You can see it as office hours if you feel like it. You can see it as individual one-on-one time where generally you have to share all of your attention with your teacher with the entire class. You have the ability to share whatever perspective you want to. Okay? You have the ability to see this rather from whatever perspective you desire to. And then you can learn the lesson or not. You can run from the lesson or not. So after you recognize the problem, how do you make the change? We're going to get there. We're getting there. But first, some of us are in acknowledging the problem first. Okay, so everybody knows when something is uncomfortable, right? You may not know what it is about it that's uncomfortable, but when you know when life doesn't feel good, you know when life isn't moving and grooving in the way where you feel like you are in flow and when you feel like you are in energy and when you feel like you are in that space where literally your soul sings. I come back here every Monday night with you guys because literally my soul sings here. My students will tell you I was tired today and around seven o'clock I got this big old jolt of energy that I don't even know where it came from because this right here feeds my soul. This right here spending time with you all This is the thing that's in flow. And once you find a thing that makes you feel like you're in flow, for some people, it's basketball. We watched DJ Rico Belli look like he was in complete flow with his music. For some people, it's um, sports. For some people, it's education. Some people really just like to learn. Okay, it can be whatever it is that you want it to be. But when you are out of that flow, you know that something isn't right. Right? So that's acknowledging that something isn't right. Then you assess. That's point two. It's a three point, triple A. You know how triple A come and save you when you're stuck on the side of the road? It's a lot of people that's stuck on the side of the road right now. So we are all going to see triple A. First, we're going to acknowledge our situation. We're going to acknowledge right now. Let me do a pulse check with myself. I feel fantastic. Earlier today, I probably didn't feel so fantastic. Why? Because I needed a nap. And that's fine. But assess your, acknowledge your situation, then you assess it. So I said, hmm, I wasn't feeling good earlier today. What is it that I need that will help me get back into that space where I feel flow? And then address it. Do something. So I believe that all of us want to enjoy this thing called life. That's I, I think we were put here on this earth to have a good time. Right now, sometimes the journey to being able to have a good time is paved with a lot of lessons that we have to learn so that we can know what a good time feels like. Okay, fair. But then after that, we're here to free ourselves from the overthinking. We're here to free ourselves from a lot of the pain that has existed at some point in our life so that we can learn the lessons. But here's the thing. So remember that person on the left. So we're going to go back to our original analogy. You have your person in the middle who's not doing well, who has assessed the situation, acknowledged the situation. I didn't do well. Assess the situation. I need to. I need help. And then address it by asking somebody. Now, the person on the left was the one that was like, you know what? I'm not even willing to acknowledge to the other person. Now, I know I'm feeling. I know I don't have it all together. I know that life doesn't quite feel right. Not only doesn't quite feel right. I know that life feels bad because they were making a 65. I know that I am feeling at this thing called life. But in my assessment of the situation, Rather than running to the lesson that's here for me, I run from it. 
And what we do is we avoid our business. So a lot of people say, you know what? That's right. I don't want to mind your business. I don't need to know what you got going on over there, over there at all. And they end up avoiding their own. So they're running from your business. They're running from their own business. What do you get when you run from everything that there is to teach you lessons? You get nowhere. So what is it that you're choosing to do with this space? Because I believe the best part of you, the best form of you, the best space that you could possibly exist in so that you can learn where flow lies in your life can be birthed here. We're all having to do things differently. We're all having to learn things differently. And in assessing the situation and finding the places that are very different in our lives and not exactly what we thought they were going to be, that weren't what we wanted them to be, that we had all this planned all the way out and life said time out. My fear is that if in our time out, we don't stop. Remember when you were young and your parents would put you in time out or your teacher would put you in time out and they would say, now you go over there and you turn around and you think about it. What happens if you go to the corner and you twiddle your thumbs? There's a real good chance that you're probably going to come back and end up doing the same thing again and you're going to end up back in the corner. What does it take for you to learn your lesson? What does it take for us to want to learn the lesson? How do we make it not be so painful in order for us to learn it? Who's feeling? Today I had some students tell me that they felt like they were drowning. Now, I know we are in our last week of school, okay? So if you feel like you are in a space where you have acknowledged your problem, you are assessing your situation and you want to talk to me right now about addressing it, I want you to come on to my live and let's have a conversation because what I'm going to introduce outwardly is what my students know is office hours. Come on, Trey. Come on, come on and ask to um, come into my live, just request, okay? So we're going to wait till she gets here. And I'm going to see if I can find you in the meantime, okay? All right, there we go. Come join me, everybody. Let's greet her. Everybody come say hey. Here she comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. Hey, Miss Jess. We are waiting for Simply Trey to join us. In the meantime, while we have a little bit of time, hey, Dominique. If this is speaking to you in any way, give me some kind of emoji. Give me some butterflies. Give me some hearts. Let me know if you have any questions. We are struggling just a little bit getting her on here. I'm going to try it again. And if there's anybody else who wants to come on, this is how we're going to do things going forward. I'm excited to see who actually would like to talk, who actually would like to work through some of the things that they are dealing with right now. All right. While we're getting her together, who else wants to come on? If you want to come on and you know how to request to come on live. Or to go live with me, just go in and click the button, okay? We're going to keep going, though. So how many people are at work right now dealing with, you know, or how many people are going to work? How many people are in school? How many people are just at home feeling like they are drowning, feeling like they are stuck, feeling like life is not feeling good, feeling like it's been six weeks too long? Where are you? Where are you? Because I think we have a beautiful opportunity. We at home. We are at home. And we have an opportunity in this space to actually do something a little bit different. So for those of you who are students who are like, you know, webinar thing, I'm not here for any of the adjustments that are coming at home under the roof of toxicity, preparing for finals, managing stress. Listen, here's a space where we can adjust. Here's a space where we can assess. Here's a space where we can acknowledge. And our addressing looks like saying, 
where is the space that I can renegotiate my agreement with what life is showing me right now? That's one of my favorite things to talk about, renegotiating agreements. Okay, because there's a space where life doesn't begin to add up because what we want from it isn't lining up with what it's giving us. But in us seeing the places where we're not getting what we want, we are missing the places where life is giving us what we need. I know in this space, I've been more productive probably in the past few weeks than I have in a really long time. Why? Because the space has been provided for us to do the things that we need to do. So if we're at home struggling to do schoolwork, if we're at home struggling to find ourselves energized and wanting to work at all, how can we allow life to be our teacher and show up for us right now? How can we find the spaces where we actually have more than we ever thought we did? So if it's, you know what, I feel like I don't have enough time. I feel like life is moving too fast. I feel like one minute I closed my eyes and it was the beginning of March and the next minute we were in May. And I don't know how all that time passed. And a lot of it passed because we ran from ourselves. Don't run from it. Don't run from you. Turn around. And in turning around, what I want everybody to do, if you have your notebook, I want you to identify the places where you're sabotaging yourself. I want you to identify the places where you are, where we are looking for the money and I don't actually mean money. When I say looking for money, I say we're looking for immediate payment. We are looking to see right now in this moment, if I do this, then what am I getting back in return? And if I can't see it right now, it makes it really hard for it to be worth it. Because if y'all know anything about me, if y'all been on the live a few weeks ago, we were talking about gardening And the most beautiful flowers and the most beautiful seeds, the most beautiful opportunities come because we cover the seed, right? We take this seed and we know everything that it has the beauty to grow into. And what we do is we dig a hole and we're not realizing that every thought that we have, that every every single thought, every word, every idea that we have is a seed that's being planted. And so when I ask you, where are the places that you are sabotaging yourself? What I'm asking is, where are the places that you are planting seeds that harm you? Where are you planting seeds of poison in your experience? Rather than sitting back and preparing. So I woke up in the morning, mm, Thursday, and it was literally the middle of the night maybe four or five o'clock in the morning. Is it okay with you guys if I share a little bit of something that I'm in the process of writing? The piece ain't finished. And I love Erica Badu, so I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about all of my stuff, okay? So, but I'm gonna tell you what came to me. Um, And it's not complete yet, but it's something that I'm working on. Um, I, I woke up in the morning and the vision that I saw in my mind was of me and my childhood home. And I was sitting in my childhood home and I could smell a cake that was baking in the oven. And so in smelling this cake that was baking, I got excited. And I went to the kitchen to open the oven to see if it was done yet. If you've ever been in that space, you know what I'm talking about, where it's just like, I know there's something that's coming. I know that there is a cake in the oven and I'm so excited about it and I just can't wait, right? Because we ain't had dessert in a long time. We all in quarantine. Our limit, our resources are limited and it's a lot of things that we are used to being, being able to have that feel like sunshine and marshmallows and rainbows and all the things that feel good to our soul. And so maybe that's where my mind was when I'm seeing this cake baking in the oven. And so... The interesting thing about this space is I could go and I would look in the oven and it wouldn't be done yet. And so I would close the oven and I would walk away from it and then I would get excited again and I would go back and I would open the oven and I would look at it. I'm like, okay, it's not ready yet. And I would go and I would look at it again because I keep in my mind, I'm checking the cake. And there's a space when there's a cake or anything that's baking in the oven where it looks like it's done. The top has crusted over nicely. If it's a chocolate cake, you honestly can't tell if it's still baking or if it's done, right? Sometimes based off the color. So you go and you look at it and you go get a knife. If you know what I'm talking about, drop me a heart or a butterfly or something. But you go get a knife. 
you think there's a chance that it might be done. And even though the timer on the oven says that there's 15 more minutes left, you're like, no, no, no. Some can't be right because I'm looking at it and it looks almost done. So I go and I get the knife and I stick the knife into the cake. And the cake comes out and it's raw in the middle. And so this cake that's raw, the, you know, the knife comes out raw and I'm like, no, 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 it's got to go back in. So you close the oven and you let it sit for a while and you're like, oh, I know it said 15 minutes, but do you see this cake and do you smell this cake? It looks good. It smells good. I'm ready. I'm sick of waiting. It's been six weeks too long inside this house and I'm ready for all the things that I was promised to me previously. So you go back and you look again. And yes, yeah, a little bit more done, but not quite. And then you get to a space in our anticipation and knowing that there is this thing that has been promised to us and knowing that there is a space where it's like, you know what? I've been working so hard for these things and I just know I'm not supposed to be poor. I just know I'm supposed to get good grades. I'm just know that this, I just know that this thing called school is supposed to come easy to me. I just know. I just know and because we have been checking so many times on something that's not ready yet. We begin to not trust our own judgment. We begin to doubt our ability to perceive if something is actually ready or not. And then this is the worst part of it all. Because the last time you close the oven and it's still super raw and you were just so certain on the third, fifth, tenth time that you've gone and you checked on this cake that it was ready and you put that knife in there and it was still wet. You were like, all right, whatever, whatever. I don't even know if I want cake no more. I'm just going to let it sit. I guess I'm going to put five more minutes on the oven. I put two more minutes five minutes ago. I put three more minutes after that. And now maybe it just needs 10 minutes. I don't even know. So you put the cake back in there. But because of our impatience, because we've been letting um, cold air into the hot oven, because we've been messing up the balance and the flow and the temperature, because we've been messing up the perfect surroundings that are there for us to be able to grow to our fullest being, we end up over baking our cake. We end up over baking our cake and then over baking our cake. But that really looks like is doubt. What it really looks like is doubt to the point that we convince ourselves that we didn't want it anyway. And it's not that it wasn't ours. It's not that it wasn't for us. It's that it wasn't ready yet. And so that's where this piece came from. And what it talks about is somebody who's coming to join you. The, the idea I got was, you know what I could be doing that whole time when the oven was on and the oven was preparing this cake rather than messing with the circumstances and messing with the surroundings and messing with the situation when the cake was perfect. The mixture was perfect. All of the elements, everything was perfect. It was going to be the best cake you probably ever tasted in your entire life. But because the circumstances didn't give it to us exactly how we wanted it to have, if we wanted to have them, then we ruined our situation. And so maybe instead of checking the cake, maybe instead of checking our watch, maybe instead of checking the clock, maybe instead of checking our calendar, maybe instead of going to the front door, maybe instead of looking out of the window for the person who may come, may not come, maybe instead of looking at your phone for the next text message that may show up or may not, maybe if instead of that, you set the table instead. What if you set the table instead? And so it's not done. And I usually don't share things with people that's not complete yet. But I'm going to start in the middle. That's going to pick up exactly where I just left off with the idea of this story. OK, and so it says, so no, I won't be checking my phone for a text that says I'm on the way. I won't be peeking out the window to see if your car has arrived yet. I won't begin to worry if you will ever show up. And I definitely won't start to get angry that you didn't arrive when I was expecting you to. No, I won't do any of that. I'm excited for you to get here, but I have way too much to do in the meantime. I have to dust and I have to make sure that not a speck of someone else's trash can get to you. I have to straighten the living room and I have to clean the bathroom because the truth of the matter is that I was raised Southern and it's not okay to invite someone over. It's not okay to invite someone in. Not yet. Not before I cleaned up the messes that were made, the messes that existed in my very own house before you arrived. I have to prepare a meal, an amazing meal. You know, the one way more nourishing than the snack that I would have had to scramble together at the last minute. The snack that would have looked pretty, the snack that would have tasted good, but left you starving an hour later. 
And while that meal cooks, I'll begin to set the table. Not just for you and not just for me, but plenty of place settings for everyone, for everything, and for every single space that's making its way to me too. Welcoming them with wide open arms, just like the ones that I'll have waiting for you. That's all of it that I'm going to share right now. It ain't done yet. But here's what this is all about. Here is where it comes into minding your business. Let's talk about my business list. My business is not what's going on over there. My business is not what's going on outside my front door. My business is not who's on the way, who's not, what's coming, what's not, how long it's going to take for it to get here. My business is what's going on in here. My business is what's going on in here. My business, my business are the things that's going to get those grades right, right? Because I'm upset about the job opportunity that's not here yet. I'm upset about the job opportunity that I thought was supposed to be mine, but didn't end up coming up. But maybe it is. But if my grades aren't right right now, even if they offered it to me, would I qualify? Or let's talk about this from a relational standpoint. So often it's like, oh, my God, how did they hurt me like that? Oh, my God, I can't believe. Oh, my God, they're cheating on me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's about everybody else and what everybody else is doing. But you're trying to open doors to a dirty house. You're trying to open doors because you want somebody else to come in and do your housekeeping. You want somebody else to come in and wash your dishes. You want somebody else to come in and scrub your toilets. You want somebody else to come in and take care of the mess that was left by the whole party that was had in here by your friends that are no good, who don't clean, don't help you clean up at the end of the day. And that's where you are inviting people into. These are the spaces where I know you were raised better than that. You can't avoid it. The house ain't going to clean itself. We want people to come in and do all the work for us and see the mess. I just want you to see all of the beauty that's here through all of the shit. I'm sorry. I'm not here to play in that. That's not mine. That's not my business. I'll wait, though. Maybe. And it might be somebody else that comes along. It might be something else that comes along that because they were willing to do their stuff first, because they weren't looking to somebody else to do it for them. They got what they needed. Because guess what? Apples across the board, I don't want the one that's rotten. I don't want the one that has a hole in it. I don't want the one that's mealy. I want the one that's crisp. I want the one that's ripe. I want the one that's freshly picked. I want the one that's ready. Because conditions were right. Because it wasn't picked too soon. Because it didn't doubt itself and pick itself too late. And then we can look at this from another circumstance. We can look at this from another position. And this is one of my favorites. We get real caught up about what other people think about us. We get real caught up in, well, they they didn't have to be disrespectful. We get caught up in people who were, well, she said this about me, or she didn't like this about me, or she came for me about this, or he came at me about that. Or he was talking about me behind my back. And so many people are like, oh, let me come tell you. Let me come tell you to keep your name, keep my name out your mouth. What's going on in somebody's mouth ain't none of your business. I am entitled to my opinion. You are entitled to your opinion. We are all entitled to our opinions. But why is it so much more important that you go prove yourself to somebody else than it is that you prove yourself to you? Because my daddy has always said a real lady has never got to say so. He probably don't even know that I was listening when he said it, but I can't even remember what we were talking about. And it stood out to me my entire life. I don't know if we were watching TV or a movie or something. And it was a girl who was like, I'm a lady and you're going to treat me like a lady. And it was going on and on and on about how much I am this and how much I am that. A real lady never has to say so. It'll precede her. And everybody will say it for her. Okay? Here 
is the space where you go and you do your own work because you will never have to speak for yourself. You will never have to proceed yourself. Everybody else will be talking about you in the way that they do will lay carpets for you everywhere you go. You are here looking for somebody to come and walk into your house and clean it for you and they trying to build you a new one. And I don't just mean romantic relationships. I mean friendships. I mean sibling ships. I mean employment ships. All the ships that there are. But your ship got to be right. Your ship has to be right because if it isn't, you are going to be too consumed because your business will have piled up too high. Your house will have gotten too dirty that you can't even see the person that's knocking on your door because you're embarrassed to open it. Because what if they find the conditions that are inside? And so now when we've had six weeks inside of our home, we've had six weeks of cleaning. We've had six weeks of time that we can go in here and do all the dusting and clean back behind all the toilets. You can take a doggone toothbrush to the towel in your shower if you wanted to because we ain't got nothing but time. Nothing but time. But we say, no, 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 no. Let me go on the Twitterverse. No, 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 no. Let me go on the Instaverse. No, 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 no. Let me go on this Zoom call and talk about why she wearing a bonnet and why he in a do-rag and where they living at and what they doing over here. Oh my God, are you eating? What it, We all worried about all of the things that don't concern us. So if you don't hear anything else, what I want you to do, if it does not come from within, it's not your business. If it don't come from inside your heart, if it don't come from inside your head, it is not your business business. It's not yours. And sometimes the things that come from inside of your heart and sometimes the things that come from inside of your head have to do with a relationship with somebody else. And so maybe you can understand what is it that is going on in here that's making all of this other space that usually feels away not feel so good. Maybe it needs to be released. Maybe it's a conversation that needs to be had. Maybe it's a renegotiation that needs to be had. But whatever there is upset in your soul, wherever there is upset in your brain, those are the spaces that need internal healing, internal clearing, internal attention, acknowledgement, assessment, and addressing. Those are the places. Is there anybody who has any questions? Is there anybody who wants to come on and spend a little bit of time with me? Who has something that's in their house? Or who has some, something that's like, you know what? Is this my business or is this not my business? Because at this point, I'm just confused. If it's you, come spend a few minutes with me. If it's you, come see about me. And in the meantime, while we wait for somebody who could possibly think about wanting to join live with me. In focusing on your inside, thank you, Dre. In focusing on your inside, in focusing on your internal, so that, because this is another thing that we've talked about for the past six weeks, your experience, when I say experience, I mean everything that's on the outside. Amani, I would love for you to just request. Do you know how to request to um, join live with me? So everything that is on the outside of your experience is merely a reflection of everything that's going on internally. So if you are finding yourself in a space where you are consistently, if you are consistently like, I'm not liking how my outside looks, here is why it's not your business. Because your outside, hi, I'm going to finish this one point and then we're going to get to it, Okay. The reason is the outside can only reflect your inside because that's the lens that you're seeing it through. All right, talk. Is your name Grace? My name is Grace and Imani Flynn. Yes. Hi. Hi. I've been watching you. Wow. Like, can I just say you are really doing God's work? Like, I've been watching you for the past three, four weeks, wow. and um, only because I just randomly decided to look at your story. And I was like, so I need to start <laughs> watching her every Monday. Mm -hmm. um, but you're just, can, please continue to do this because you're helping a lot of women out. Um, so here's the um, thing, and I'm going to stop you there. This is not just for women. This is not a woman thing. This is not an age thing. This is not a college student thing. This is a people thing. Mm -hmm. What I do, I teach life design. Okay? But I want you to tell me. What's going on in your situation where you're like, is this my business or not? Yes. So um, my father and I, we have a really complicated relationship. And mm -hmm. I say this because 
you know how fathers can be growing up to young women. They often comment on our bodies. They often um, kind of put a lot of negativity into us. And um, just trying to grow out of that is very hard. Mm-hmm. And um, it's to the point where I'm not close to my family because of it. They choose to ignore it. Mm-hmm. And um, when I try to sit down and talk to it, t- talk to the, my father specifically about it, and I have my mother there as a witness, you know, the Bible says to not to gossip, but to like treat problems um, like head on, have mm-hmm. somebody witness. Uh, when I tried to do it the right way and explain to my father how he felt, uh, how I felt, while I validated his feelings, he didn't validate mine. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just basically calling me selfish and ungrateful because of it. Mm-hmm. And he actually ended up um, cutting me off. I'm not even sure if I'm going to end up going to Spelman next year because of it. Like, I don't feel like it at all. So um, I know what he's dealing with is pretty, uh, it's all on him. That's his business. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my own business, it's like, how do I deal with somebody? How do I deal with somebody else's business that's affecting my business? Okay. First of all, let me say, you ain't ever stepped foot in my classroom and it feels like you're there. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you for allowing everybody that is in this live right now to support you. Okay. What I'm going to say first is this is not a father thing. This is your experience. Okay. Um, And so I don't want you to think that this is an overarching that every man Every father that you're going to encounter is going to respond to situations in this way. That's number one. Number two. First of all, I I can't even keep going. First of all, I am doing a (laughs) master class on the 16th of May about renegotiating relationships. And it's actually in ways a Mother's Day special. Okay. But, and and I've talked about it a lot about, um, about Mother's Day, but you are going to have a ticket for free. Okay. So what I want you to do is DM me because I want you to be there and I want you to get everything that we're going to get because this is part of what I'm teaching is how to renegotiate agreements. And it's not just externally. A lot of times we have to uncover in us where we feel it aligns. Okay. So it's not so much that somebody says something and I'm going to show you what I mean. Y'all don't see me standing, but I ain't before 11. Okay. I'm real short. I'm clearly black. Okay. I got brown skin. I mean, you might think I'm some version of black, but I just know myself to be black American. I would love to know more. Okay. And I'm female. Okay. So if somebody walked up to me and said, "Mm, you just a six foot tall white man, I'd be like, okay. You need some glasses, boo, but all right. If if that's how you feel today, it's all good. Okay. The reason when people say things, they hit us deeply is because somewhere in there, we identify with it. We have adopted it as our own belief about ourselves. And we believe it to be true. And they came in and they stepped on your trigger. What we don't know oftentimes is the places that we have not healed ourselves, we have landmines buried up under our skin, buried up in our bodies, buried up in our souls. And so we just out here minding our business one day. We just we just trying to cut our grass. And here comes somebody not knowing and they step on this landmine. Or sometimes when it's family, they know that it's a landmine and they come and they jump all over it. At the end of the day, it is our landmine. At the end of the day, it is in our field. At the end of the day, it is something. Here's why it is internal. If we stop for a second and find the places and go, you know what? This ain't ours. This ain't mine. You know what? I actually don't identify as bitch today. No, that's not my name. I don't think I I exhibit those qualities in any way, shape, or form. So in the same way, if somebody called me a six foot tall white man, if somebody calls a bit calls me a bitch, it's oh sweetie, you need glasses too. How you doing today? Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So there's a space in our formative years, especially with the people who raise us, where our inner child has taken those on because the way that we are taught, and y'all are just getting a glimpse into what my classroom actually looks like. Okay, the way we are taught is based off of 
feedback from our the people who rear us, the people who care who are our caregivers, right? So if we do something really good, they go, yay. If we do something that's really bad, they go, no. If we try to touch fire, they go, stop that, right? Because it could cause us harm. And so because of that, they are the people that we look to to ensure that we are safe across the board. So sometimes we bury things that really aren't fact. They are their opinions. They are their experiences. But but because in our formative years, they are the only people that we know who have the ability to give us any and all of our basic needs. They are the people who keep a roof over our, over our head. They keep us wrapped up tight. They are the ones that make sure we're fed and we have milk and we have all the things that we need to be able to grow and to be nourished. We sometimes, if they accidentally take water and pour it into our milk, if we accidentally take something and it's like, oh, I thought it was milk, but I picked up something else and I poured it in the cup, but you drank it like it was everything that you could that you needed to survive. Like it was everything that you needed to live. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. So here's a space where now as an adult, you're like, oh, actually, I'm just lactose intolerant. This doesn't identify with me. Whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't mine. So your business in this, there is there is both. There is external business here and there's internal business here. The internal business that exists here is you have to dig up your landmines, baby. You, you got to come in here and figure out the places where you have identified on an intimate, personal level with something that is toxic to you. OK, and I, this is not about your dad. I don't know your dad. I don't know each side of it. I'm just saying across the board, even if it was pineapple, pineapple tastes like sweet sugar, wonderfulness to the right person, to the wrong person. It's poisonous to the wrong person. You might need an EpiPen and a rush to the hospital. OK, so this is not personal in any way about anybody in specific, but all of it is the places where you are feeling those things come up within you and those places where you're like, uh -uh, I don't like this. Uh, uh, this don't feel good. Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Those places where you can feel somebody stepping down on your landmine and you know, the minute that foot comes up, you're going to explode all over yourself and them and anybody else. This is what I mean about cleaning your house. If your house is too packed with stuff, somebody going to open your door and the stuff is going to fall out onto them. My quarters. Okay. And then there's no way that you can even clean your mess by yourself because it has gotten to the point that you can't even see your head from your ass at this point. Forgive me. I also use four letter um, words frequently. So, too. Okay. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And I'm not saying it's an easy process. I'm not saying that it's a comfortable process. I'm not saying that it feels good. I'm saying once it is gone, think about a bomb squad, right? So we're talking about landmines. Think about the people who have to go in and defuse bombs. They wearing 15 pounds of soup that just in case that bomb does go off in some kind of way, they won't be mangled to bits, right? They have a whole other team. They got people in their ears. Like it gets to a point where if we don't really do it, it's going to take a whole team to help us clean this house out. You get to make a different choice. You get to say, you know what? It's dirty. And it might be really, really dirty. And it might be really, really messy. But all I have to do right now in this moment is pick up this one piece of paper and put it in the trash. Boom. That's one thing. Okay, now after I pick up that one piece of paper and put it in the trash, let me go find this other thing. Oh, wait a minute. This bottle actually belongs in the pantry. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go. And then there's some people's houses. And I know we all know what I'm talking about. You walk in and it looks so clean. And if you open up a closet, you should be afraid. Right? And the only way to clean that closet is to literally take everything out of it. This is what I'm talking about for you. You have to go and take everything out of it. Now, taking everything out starts with one piece of thing. But you go in and you take all of the things out and you take them out piece by piece in a way that is digestible to you. In a way that is digestible to you might be like, you know what? I need a friend. I need some help with this. A way that is digestible to you might be like, you know what? I need mom. A way that is digestible to you might be like, hey, I need a life coach like Professor Williams. It might be I need a therapist. It might be I need a psychiatrist. It might be I need a doctor. It might be I need church. It might be I need a minister. Whatever it is that you need, you have to assess your situation because in the same way you go cleaning and if you don't have trash bags ready, where's stuff going to go? Where's it going to go? Okay. Yes. 
I hope that is in somewhat helpful. And this masterclass is going to blow your mind. Trust me. Okay. I, you Do not forget to DM me so that I don't forget. But I want you to be there and I want to gift you a spot in that class. Okay. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Like, I- Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So what I'm going to do, guys, because I know at 915, this is going to go out. I'm going to close out the whole live and then I'm going to open it back up. We only going to be here for like another 15 minutes because I'm not going to take your entire Monday night as much as I love spending time with you guys. OK, so we're going to be right back. In the meantime, why are you going to go find five more people and tell them to come back and see me? All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, we're back. We're back. I'm going to wait for a second for everybody to come back in for our last 15 minutes. We're going to end up right at 915 today. And I'm just going to wait for a few minutes for everybody to get up in here with me, okay? If you have been having a good time, drop a butterfly. If you have been having a good time, drop a heart. If you think for whatever reason this is something that we should continue to do all throughout the summer and forever and ever, just go ahead and let me know while we're waiting for everybody to come back on the live. We back, we back, we back. This is, Tati, thank you for saying that. This is the format that I want to continue in, okay? Because I want to make sure that we're actually having an opportunity to talk to real people about real things because so often we don't recognize that our story is not just for ourselves. Our story is not just for us to hold on to. Our lessons are not just for us. Our lessons are that so that we can free somebody else because this is what community looks like. I want to stop for just a minute and talk about the idea of community because right now more than ever, we are recognizing what our relationships mean for us. Right now more than ever, we are recognizing that literally the community is all that we have. The human race is all that we have. Okay. And so there's a place where we say, you know what, let me show up for my sister. You know what, let me show up for my brother. Let me go out of my way. But here's the thing, not just let me go out of my way. Let me go out of my way to heal myself so that I don't go explode all over everybody else because they accidentally step on my landmines. Let me take the time that I need to heal myself so that every single time I attempt to help help somebody, I'm not failing them. Mm -mm. I'm not failing them because I have taken the time and I've been brave enough to get myself to 100% because I've been brave enough to at least get myself to the A. We talking about from 90 to 100 because I've been brave enough to do something with my soul to make sure that I am a healthy human being to and for myself so that I can be healthy to and for others. Those are the spaces. Ashanti, you want to come see me? What if they are purposely stepping on it? You want to come spend some time, Ashanti? Let me know. Because I think that is a wonderful question that we can talk about. What if people are purposely stepping on your landlines? If people are purposefully Stepping, no, we don't cut them off. We say thank you. And I'm going to tell you why. Because either it was going to be stepped on on purpose or it was going to be stepped on on accident. And at the end of the day, the landmine was still there. So whether somebody comes and tells us in a difficult way or tells us in a way that feels good to us, it's something that needed to be brought to our attention anyway. So we say thank you for providing an opportunity for this to not have to show up in a way, to not show up later. Remember, I told y'all my prayer all the time is God teach me the lesson the first time. God teach me the lesson right now, however you need to do it. If you want somebody to come jumping on my landmines, tell them, come on, show up to the party. I'm ready. Come see about me, please. However, I need to figure out a landmine is there. 
I want to know. You want to know why? Because the most powerful thing is no landmines. The most powerful thing is knowing, having anybody, somebody help you determine where they are. It's not about showing anybody else's true colors. It's recognizing that people are providing a situation. People are providing a space for you to evolve into your best self. And however that shows up for you is still a blessing. There's still a lesson there. And you can choose to focus on the pain or you can choose to focus on the purpose. How is whatever this landmine is that's hidden deep under my skin, how is it stopping me from being my best version of myself? How is it stopping me from doing that thing that makes my soul sing? How is it stopping me from designing the most beautiful, enjoyable experience of what life could feel like for me? How? So whether they mean to do it, whether they don't, because sometimes what we take is somebody comes and they were purposely stepping on it. That was their own landmine. You are representing something in them because my sister said this all the time. We sometimes are just recognizing complementing insecurities. That's it. So you thought they did something to you on purpose because they over here busy thinking you did something to them on purpose. And y'all just purposely showing each other landmines. And rather than seeing that you're showing each other landmines, you want to find somebody to be mad at. Which is fine. You can choose to do that. You can choose to keep checking that cake in the oven. You can choose to do that. You can choose to let the air out. You can choose to allow the perfect conditions that are sitting here in this space for you to have everything that is for you to get in the way of getting your cake. Don't let the messenger make you miss the message. I say that I feel like every single week. I feel like I say it every single week. Don't let the messenger make you use them, make you lose or miss the message. Sometimes the message is going to come wrapped up in a blanket that feels so cozy and it'll be, how are you today? Oh, you're not feeling well. I get that. Sometimes it's going to be sandpaper. It's going to cut you up in the process, but you won't get it at the end of the day. You're going to be polished and you're going to be smooth and your skin going to feel like butter by the time that sandpaper finish. At the end of the day, do you still get it? Because all of the things are actually the perfect storm to help us get everything that we've ever wanted. So Ashanti is going to come spend a couple of minutes with me. We're waiting for Miss Ashanti. To make it in. Hi, Ashanti. Hey, how are you? I'm wonderful. It's so good. First of all, can I just say this makes me so happy to see faces? I'm so nervous right now. Don't be. Don't <laughs> be. We, this is me and you. This is this okay. is do you see anybody else? I don't. No. Okay, so just like a FaceTime. What's up? Okay. Um, you basically talked about okay, so there was one part of like what you were saying, you were, when you're like whether there needs to be like a conversation about something, like when something like starts like mm -hmm. eating at you and you can't really focus on yourself because mm -hmm. they're, I guess their business is affecting your business or maybe you all's business, maybe mm -hmm. like too overwhelming for you to, you know, break off and do what you need to do. Like, Can I help you rephrase else. that? Really? I just want to help yes. all the people understand this. Okay. Their business isn't stopping you from doing anything. Right. Their business is illuminating in you the spaces where you need to mind your business. Right. Does that make sense? Does that yes. help? Yes. Okay. So it keep does going. make sense. So how do you know? So what if you feel like um, a portion of your life that's like very toxic or maybe um, a situation that's not good for you? Um, if you feel like there should be a conversation, when do you know if it's worth that effort or not? Like if you look at the track record and you're like, okay, Shanti, this is damaging. Like, 50, like this has happened over and over. You're trying to relearn the same lesson, but like this individual or individuals, I should say, um, like it just keeps coming back. So when you know when to just like cut something off or to stop being the mature one and like try to have a conversation. Okay, so here's the thing. Oftentimes we conversation from pain. Right. We don't conversation 
We don't converse. <laughs> we have conversation <laughs> from a space of pain. We don't have conversation from a space of acknowledgement, assessment, assessment, and addressing the situation. Okay. Right. Which is literally okay. what the whole master class is about. It is a blueprint for A, how to figure out what it is that you even got to say in order to address it and then how to walk through it. Okay. So just so you know, it's it's the whole system here. Okay, I read it. Oftentimes we come and we feel like we can dump all of our wants onto somebody else and that they should literally readjust their entire life to say, oh, I hear that makes you upset. I hear that's uncomfortable for you. Let me change all of who I am so that I can make you happy. And that is what we are wanting from people. We aren't saying this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. And let me understand what it is that you're dealing with and going through. And then let's bring a space where we acknowledge what it is that we are wanting together out of what this relationship is. Because if I go to the public expecting it to look like TGI Fridays, I don't know. Because it's most like what? I should be able to go here and have food. I should be able to go here and have the food that I like. Okay, well, maybe you're going to the right wrong space because the agreement that's there is not prepared food. It's food that you got to go cook yourself. All of the places serve the food. Right. Okay. So would you say that if you don't feel comfortable, I guess, maybe renegotiating your relationship with this person or you feel as though they're not in a space to receive you in the way that you like want to be received in like this conversation, do you feel like you should just completely just like exit out because you know it gets exhausting when you see potential in something or you know things may have been good before and then bad and you're like wow I don't necessarily know if this is something that I want to cut off or should cut off mm -hmm. um, if you feel like the energy that you're receiving is like not what am I trying to say so here's my I want to say fair because okay. life isn't fair but um, so I hear you I hear you I hear you and thank you for coming and saying what a whole lot of people are thinking. Thank you for being the brave one who's saying all the things that a lot of the people are thinking. And here's the thing where I want to help you to shift your perspective some. Because we look and we say, you know, we feel like they're not in the space to receive this conversation. That's their business. That's not your business. Are you in the space to deliver it appropriately? That is your business. Have you done the homework where you know what it even is that you're delivering? I That's my position. appropriate. <laughs> yeah, but so often we feel like we have the right or the duty or responsibility to assess somebody else's. That's not your business. Exactly. All I can handle is Patrice. All I can do is say, you know, this is what I'm coming to do. This is what I'm understanding. This is where I'm coming from. There literally is a blueprint for this. The master class is called Well Designed Lives. It's going to be on May 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern. The, everything is going to come out later this week, okay? Okay, I'm coming. There's a, if you ever hear yourself talking and you're like, well, you know, I need to have a conversation with them because they, that's how you know you're in somebody else's business. If it's not because I, mm -hmm. you're in somebody else's business. And you need to address yours, you need to assess yours, you need to clean yours up and figure out what it is that you're even wanting so that you can have a conversation. Because if you are going to the conversation, if you are going into this other space in a way where it will not be fruitful, it's literally like you dumping soda pop in your garden and you're like, but why aren't the flowers growing? Yeah. Because it's coke and because that's not good for the soil and because... It's not helping. Does that make I hear sense? You. I hear you. We're going to talk about this. I okay. promise you, you want to come join me just because it's too much to do and it's far right. too in depth. And it literally is like, we're going to work through this system together. It's far too much for me to try to do in a five minute time it's frame. A lot of work it's not going to work. I understand. Thank okay. you. Thank I you. appreciate You're you. You're welcome. All right. Be. You guys, I'm going to say this again. Monday nights are my absolute, absolute absolute favorite time every single day that I get here I let me just say thank you I want to say thank you I want to say thank you I want to say thank you for out of all the places that you could be out of all the things that you could be doing you choose to come here and you choose to spend time with me you choose to come and hear and listen to me just talk and ramble about all the things 
that I truly, truly love to talk about because I feel like my goal is to help everybody live a joyful, well-designed life that they want to be a part of, that they can go and say, you know what? I got healthy relationships left and right. Why? Because my relationship with myself is healthy. Why? Because I've been brave enough to adjust and to assess and to acknowledge and to address the relationship that I want to have and actually put in the work behind it so that I can see me. Because when you can see you, you don't need anybody else to. When you can see you, you don't need anybody else to come in to, to validate you or to do any of the things. It's like, Oh, okay. You just can't see what I can see in me. And that's okay. Because that's your business. It's not mine. I love you guys. I know I say that and I'm sure people use that word freely, but my students can attest to the fact that I don't use that word lightly, but I do use it freely because I mean it. That the love that exists in this space literally makes my soul smile, operate, function, maneuver, and Monday nights are my absolute favorite. I cannot wait to see you guys again next um, next Monday night. And you know what? Before we go, this might sound weird, but I'm going to do what we did in my class today. And I asked my students if I should do it. And they said, yes, do it at the end. And it just dropped into my mind. So we're going to, if you are at home, I just want you to stop for a minute because in this whole quarantine and in this whole isolation and in this whole space where we aren't really grooving and being able to see people and like hanging out and having physical intimacy, and I don't mean sex, I mean a hug, okay? I want you to take your right hand and as weird as it feels, I don't even care. Take your right hand and I want you to wrap it all the way around to your left shoulder. I want you to take your left hand and I want you to wrap it all the way around to your right shoulder and I want you to hug yourself like you mean it. I want you to grab on for dear life. I want you to feel like you were in the arms of somebody who loves you because you should. I want you to sink into it. I want you to feel it. I want you to press into it. I want you to stop for a second and feel like you are being embraced because that's what this is all about. It's embracing, it's embracing all of the parts that are inside of you so that you can win. So that you have enough embraces that you have some to share and it's not going to put you in failing territory. That you are operating at a surplus. And when you're operating at a surplus, you have enough to just give away. Fill yourself up where there are deficits. That's what this is about. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you, allowing me virtually to be the person that's giving you a hug right now or facilitating an embrace and some intimacy with yourself. I cannot wait until next Monday night. You guys are, oh, and in the meantime, I will be back on live on Wednesday night with the Zytal De uh, Deltas from Wellesley and MIT and the chapter up there in Boston. So it's a two for one special again this week. We're going to be doing Wellness Wednesday. So if you love what you had tonight, come back and see us again on Wednesday night. I would love to have you there. Love yourself like you mean it. And in the meantime, I'm going to open this door wide open while we learn to love ourselves together. Okay. Um, have a beautiful evening. Have a beautiful beautiful evening. Invite somebody, invite three people, invite 10 people back with you next.